Hello friends, Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates here, coming at you with a flip through, like my new readers, turquoise, pretty cool, huh? They don't match. That's okay. I'm definitely not a fashion plate. <laughs> we don't have to worry about that in this house. So I promised you that I was going to do a flip through of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher's um, Summer Edition. I was going to do it yesterday, but um, as many of you know, yesterday was Mike's birthday, so I decided to not do a video. We didn't necessarily do anything. I had a, um, a follow-up physical therapy appointment yesterday, and then after that we went out for lunch, and then just kind of came back and napped and chilled and watched TV and just kind of hang out. Nothing special. He took the day off. Um, he is back at work today, so it was good. So anyway, um, I have this flip through to do for you. The August, I believe, edition of the Cross Stitcher magazine has come in. I get the digital edition, of course, so um, you get it kind of first out of the gate, I guess, because they just send, you, send it to you. Um, so once I'm done recording this one, I'm going to go ahead and record that as well. I won't put actually put that one up or make it available for you to see until next week. So um, this one though will be will be up today. So anyways, Primitive Stitcher Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine Summer Edition. This is the cover. And just looking at the cover, there's already some really cute things that catch my eye. Now this is going to be a little bit, um, you know, since it is digital and showing it to you on my iPad, it's kind of a little unwieldy. This is the design on the next page, and it, it is a ad for the Ultra Punch, but I believe this design is in the magazine. I love this punch needle design. There are multiple things about it that I love, and I will talk more about it when we get to it. But, oh, love that. So lots of goodies. As For those of you that might not have seen my interview with Deb, she did state that she tries to keep it evenly um, divided, the magazine evenly divided between punch needle and cross stitch. So it kind of goes back and forth through the whole magazine. We start with a hello from Deb. Hi, Deb. Um, she's lovely. I had so much fun talking to her. Our first pattern is a cross stitch one. It is called Our First Flag and it is by um, Twin Peak Primitives, our friends over in the Netherlands. And it is Betsy Ross's house. I think she did a really good job with this. I find it very interesting. So she the write-up in here includes um, a picture of the real house, picture of Betsy working on a flag, and a little bit of a write-up of the background of um, Betsy Ross and how she came to be involved with the Revolutionary Army and um, how she came to make the flag. So that was kind of cool. I like my history. I think a lot of you guys know that. Next, we have a punch needle project. This is called Gentle Soul, and it's designed by Janine Happ of Two Old Crows. And I will call him Smokey. Or maybe he's Yogi. <laughs> or it's not a right jolly old bear. That's a right jolly old elf. I don't remember. <laughs> I know. Silly. This one is punched with, um, the great thing about these is there's so many alternatives they provide. It is, the called for is Valdani, um, 12, number 12 pearl cotton, but they provide, and it also has some general arts in it, but they also provide equivalents for DMC and Sullivan's. So if you don't have one, you probably have the other and you can have a mixture of whatever and it will all work. One of the things that I don't know whether, I don't remember noticing this in earlier issues of the magazine, but look at the artwork at the bottom of the page. Isn't that pretty? 
Like I said, I don't remember in earlier issues seeing such pretty artwork, and it could just be because these flowers have caught my eye more than others have. But I'm going to ask Deb, um, who did the pretty artwork? Next up, we have a cross-stitch one again. It is called a handkerchief sampler, and it is a reproduction sampler from Teresa Vanette, Shakespeare's peddler. And she describes in this that, you know, samplers were done by young girls who were practicing, who were testing, who were learning. And so this is a real good example of like a test, a test piece of cloth that a young girl was using. She does have a picture of the original in here. And it is quite stained, but you can see there's just like bits and pieces scattered across the whole sampler. How cool is that? This is done on 40 count um, Old Town Blend by r and Reproductions. And she uses a mixture of Weeks and Geno Arts. But like I said, the DMC and the Sullivan equivalents are given in here. So that is pretty cool. Next, we are back to Punch Needle, Curious Caitlin by Roberta Jackson of Dogwood Tales Art. Sweet little bunny. I love the plate. I assume that's some kind of like plate. My first assumption is that it was a find at a, at a um, antique store or a thrift store. I love that finish. So pretty. And again, she has Valdani as well as DMC and Sullivan's. Next, back to Cross Stitch. And this is a Barbara Anna design, Strawberry Time. And I love this. I'm not much into the whole crows and blackbirds and that kind of thing. And I'm definitely not into the whole animals wearing clothes kind of thing. But I love this, and I think one of the reasons I love it is because of the way it's finished. I love that she has sewn different colors of fabric on each side of the finished stitching to make it fit in the frame. And it's not like the, from what I can tell, and it might just be perspective, it's not like this is even the same size as this over here. This looks a little bit wider, the red fabric but I love how it coordinates and I love how it makes it so it fits in a standard size frame. I think this is brilliant. And this is a finish I will be, this is a piece I will be doing and a finish I will be stealing for other things because I do so many small projects, right? <laughs> I heard that, I know. So the called for is DMC in this one and there is the Sullivan's um, equivalent. Back to Punch Needle, we have A Rainbow Smiles the Clouds Away, inspired by Emily Dickinson's poem on this long storm, The Rainbow Rose. This is by Barbara Shores of Village Folk Art. Pretty traditional punch needle, a traditional finish, and it looks like it's mounted in, on a basket or in a basket. That's pretty. I like the salt box style houses and of course there's a rainbow and what could be a palm tree, although you don't see many salt box style houses where there are palm trees. <laughs> Just saying. She uses DMC for this and there is the Sullivan's equivalent given. And she is telling you um, like how many skeins you can see when she has more than one skein needed. So that is always very helpful. <clears throat> Next we have a little cross stitch piece, Small Treasures by Rebecca Noland of Lucy Beam. This is, let's see if it's some kind of, oh, I think it's a box top meant to be put on a box. I love the buttons on it. And really, you could change up the color 
the colors of all of this, use brighter colors, use brighter buttons, and have like a more modern piece. You could have a more whimsical folksy piece. I mean, just the change of the color, change of the fabric would totally change the feel from a primitive to really any style you want, which is always cool. She uses Gentle Art on this, but there is the DMC and the Sullivan's equivalents, equivalents given. Next is Punch Needle again, Libby, designed by Nancy Ar Ar Ariagno of the Cooperage. Nancy, forgive me for tearing up your name. So this is a take on the Statue of Liberty, and she's called Libby. And she's a sweetie pie with great big red cheeks. And that is, oh, that's done with um, Thread Gatherer Silk Threads. So that's cool. Let's see, next back to stitching. Summer Roses, Esther Marjanovic of Sub Rosa Design. This is a pretty one, love this one. I think that's gorgeous. I hope the outside noise isn't too much. You can hear the highway, of course. The wind's blowing and you hear the creak of the umbrella every once in a while. Some more pretty artwork at the bottom. More pretty. I like the little touches. Now, Vana's article in this issue is like, holy cow. <laughs> it is making a box in which you can store your monthly stitched designs and and um, swap them out on the lid. So I don't know whether you can tell, the box is made with, you know, covering mat board with fabric and then putting it all together. And then you store inside each of your pieces that you will interchange on the lid. It's like a project extraordinaire. And, and she goes through each and every phase of it with pictures and written instructions. Um, she tells you how to figure out the size that you need because of course, depending on which patterns you're doing, you're, they're going to, you're need, gonna need a different size box, right? Um, it's all just, she's really quite amazing. So she goes through all of that Just, yeah, just, and it's all done with magnets. Got some trade winds blowing here today, boy. That is not a bad thing. Next we have, and the door to the bedroom keeps slamming, and oh, now the, um, the blinds are going to get in on the action. <laughs> so many of you thought that the, the racket that the blinds were making the other day was Mike um, doing the dishes in the kitchen and that I was giving away his birthday secret <laughs> Not to worry and he did love it. He was funny. He was I Think he was over in the kitchen Maybe getting Sasha's shot ready when I I had left it upstairs I'd gotten it all put together and I had it sitting on my work table upstairs while he was in the kitchen I went up and grabbed it and brought it down and laid it on his iPad here on the couch where he sits. And he, you know, was walking over and he was walking this way and he, he looked at it and he said something like, um, what's this left lane? And, and then he realized, oh, <laughs> it's like, oh, I get it. He's so cute. Anyways, we are back to Punch Needle. Ba Ba Blackbird by Michelle Palmer of painting with threads and yes she is one of my favorite punch needle artists look 
how gorgeous that is. She has such a talent for color. And you know that why, that's why I love it. Now, um, I believe it's so much to love has partnered with Michelle to start offering, to start translating her punch needle patterns into cross stitch. I haven't looked recent, excuse me. I haven't looked recently to see what all is out, what all has been done. I need to do that because um, any of these that are punch needle, I'd, I'd love to do as cross stitch as well. So this is all DMC. Michelle is known for pretty much only using DMC to create the colors and the blends that that make her her pieces really pop. But again, the Solomon equivalents are given. <clears throat> Let's see, cross stitch by my hands, 1803, designed by Teresa Miller of Teresa's Primitive Treasures. Those are some big bees. That's a sweet one too. And I love, right down here, do you see the punch needle bee? And I assume it's based on the, just one of these bees. And that's actually something that I think, I don't know whether Deb touched on it in the in the interview or at some point when we were talking otherwise during the weekend about how easy it is to take any any cross stitch pattern and translate it into a punch needle pattern it's not as easy but the you know coming the other way from punch needle to cross stitch but for this i mean you would just take like this portion of the cross stitch pattern and enlarge it and then just fill it in with the, the color that you wanted, right? God, I love that. In fact, I want to make that punch needle be more than I want to do the cross stitch. I'm looking to see if she talks about the punch needle be in here. Uh, she doesn't. That's okay. Speaking of punch needle, Passing the Time, designed by Rose Clay of Three Sheep Studio, and it's a sweet tree in the summer with a person on a swing. How many of you had swings in your trees? I did. I preferred to climb trees though. I was a tomboy. I climbed trees. I spent many hours in one of the apple trees in our backyard. I would take my books out there and read. This one is done with mostly Valdani, but again, there's the DMC and the Sullivan's equivalents. Next, we have a Prim Sewing Basket Pin Keep by Lori Brecklin of Not Forgotten Farm. So that's a sweet piece and a very unusually shaped piece. I like that. That's worked on a 32 count cocoa linen by Weeks with Gentle Arts, with the DMC and the Sullivan equivalents given. Do you see a theme here? Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. That's a clip art piece with some watercolor flowers. I love that. Wouldn't mind having that as a cross stitch piece. Next, we have Summer Salt Box by Kathy Brown of The Teacher's Pet. I like this one. I just wish people didn't feel like they had to add blackbirds to everything, though. I could do it without the bird, I know. It needs a flower up there instead of a blackbird, but I really like that one. <clears throat> and again, Valdani with DMC and Sullivan equivalents. Next we have the Wool Keeper. This is Teresa Kogutz. I like the sheep. I'm not real crazy about the, the face on the woman. She scares me a little. But you know, I'm not a big, I don't like people on samplers and I'm not a big people person. 
truer in many ways than you know. This is stitched with weeks, as well as some DNC, and then the DMC and Sullivan's equivalents are given. <clears throat> All right, here is the one. Under the Blooms, designed by Julie Thomas of Old Tattered Flag. And look at this. I mean, how cool are those petals? So those are just like left, long loops just left hanging. And I think when I read the directions, it's like three layers of the loops. And then look at the fringed edge. She gives the instructions for all of this in here. Now again, why do we need to have blackbirds? I would have to trade it out for like maybe smaller of these flowers, I don't know. I don't think we need the blackbirds, but I love that. She used um, number eight pearl cotton, Valdoni number eight pearl cotton for it. DMC and Sullivan's equivalents given. But you know, like I said, she gives all the all the um, instructions on how to do the fringes on the flower and how to do the edging. And as if that weren't enough, look at the pretty cone flower watercolors in that, decorating that page. I love that. All right, next we have Cut Your Thistles by Stephanie of Lindy Stitches. Cut your thistles before St. John or you will have two instead of one. Who knew? I don't know what before St. John refers to either. I love thistles. Let's see if she gives an explanation for this verse. This weather lore is easy to understand if you have had thistles in your garden. However, did you know thistle down was once used for stuffing pillows? Remember that next time you need to stuff a small project, or remember that next time you need to stuff a small project, or if you are lost in the woods without a pillow. <laughs> I love these people. <laughs> Obviously, I haven't had thistles growing in my garden because I don't know what it means before St. John, but it's always good to prune things. I do know that. She uses Gentle Arts Classic Color Works and Weeks Dye Works on this. And yes, the DMC and the Sullivan equivalents are given. This is another one. The next one is another one that I want to drop everything and do. Luckily, I don't have the wool. My Favorite Things by Deb Boudreau of Rustic Country Handicrafts. So we have a wall hanging that has a centerpiece of punch needle. And look at the tail on that sheep. And the sheep is wearing a little dress, which again, eh. But look at the quilt patterns underneath and then look at the wool wall hanging part of it. So mimicking the pieces down below, mimicking what's in the punch needle, that gorgeous wool flower. I want to do this like right now, but I don't have the wool and I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to wait and make this a winter project. I have to get, I have that, um, the salt, the uh, salt crock one, I forget what it's called, by Michelle Palmer that I started and I needed the bigger punch for, the bigger needle, and I got that from Deb. So I have to get that back out and get working on that. But this is going to be a project for the winter. I haven't really worked with wool, done any wool applique, so this might be a perfect introduction to that. So, what's next? Still getting by all the pieces needed for that. Okay, next we have I Believe in Mermaids by Isabella Abiati of the Primitive Hair. Let's 
So this is awesome. I love that she stitched it on one piece. I love the, the hem stitching or whatever you call it of the, the, the needlework. But then she mounted it on some more of her fabric in the frame. I believe in mermaids. So that's a cool piece. And of course, she's just using a couple colors of Weeks Dye Work in that. Let's see, I think that might be it. Yep. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, let me know. I will link to um, the magazine website down below so that if you are not a subscriber yet and you want to jump on the bandwagon, you can get right over there. Highly recommend it. For now, that is all. I will be back tomorrow with a stitch with me. And I think I'm going to be working on shades of gold. What fun. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.